far removed from that mm-hmm. to relearn that all over again. Because LeBron go out there and crack collarbone. You got to build these shoulders up. I mean, LeBron ain't lifting those shoulders. I, pretty, I don't know. He looks pretty. Busted, I mean, you right? like he be shaking, he be shrugging them off. You know, you get upset when he do that. He be shrugging them off. <laughs> I know, but I see him without a shirt on and all those. Yeah, shoes. you saw that. The, the, he, he's yeah. Hey, he's built. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Together. I, I think like old Shea Sharp. He look like a little old Shea Sharp. Put yeah. it like that. Yeah. Like, like that right Shea now. Sharp now or? Oh, Shea Sharp Shea still Sharp. go. Oh, hey, don't let it fool you. Shea Sharp still go like an Aztec god up under there. <laughs> <laughs> for real, though. Huh. Wait, I, I got something coming for you. Three months, I'm going to be 50. Okay. Yeah. I guarantee you, you ain't going to find a video like this here. Huh. You going to see a video on Instagram? Yeah. 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 Really? Yeah. Yeah. Could have fooled me. but I keep a Batman costume year round. Mm. Remind me a week before, so I remember to unfollow. No, 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 no. <laughs> I thought this conversation was about LeBron James. LeBron, LeBron. every conversation gets turned to me Shane and Bron. Me and Bron like this yeah. here. Okay, so d- d- I don't think it's a crazy concept as he plays through this year. To no matter whatever happens, in the finals, they're going to yeah. get back to the finals. I don't think they can win it, but. There's no way he's going to catch Michael Jordan to be the goat. You say he's a goat, but he's not the goat. But if he did choose to play football for you, I, I don't think that's a laughable concept. I think it would be very interesting to see what he could do for one year of football with your team because it's high-powered offense. Could could he be your best red zone target? Well, no absolutely. Doubt. Absolutely, yeah. no doubt. Would, would he have scored on the play Jesse James did not score on, even though I thought he scored, but against New England? Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably. Right. Yeah, I mean, uh, especially for a red zone guy, you talk about a guy you put in, you know, you throw a fade up, you throw a ball up. I'm pretty sure he's gonna go get it with his vertical jump. He no doubt. He might be Gronk. He might be Gronk. Gronk six six two eight two seventy five two eighty. Gronk yeah. six eight two fifty five two sixty. Okay, but Gronk is willing to take <laughs> shots, <laughs> no, no, and, and I, I don't know if LeBron wants to do no, that. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Huh? I mean. The dude's a physical guy. Don't get that wrong. I think um, the, the football is way more physical, obviously, and way more. And obviously, you know, he hasn't. He doesn't know how, like, how to fall, how to you know protect himself. <laughs> no. But like you said, you give the guy about a you know a year to you know to study the game. I'm pretty sure you know with yeah. the athleticism, he's able to play the game. But if you just used him in the red zone, it doesn't get that physical in the red zone. It's not like a high collision place. Yeah. If you throw fade routes, yeah, right? a fade in the slant. Yeah. No, you better stay on the plate. Stay on that plate. Yeah, that's nice. Do slap, do slap. Especially in the red zone. Yeah. Sometimes. They hurt. Yeah. And that's a big target, though, Skip. You got to realize now. 6 8 target on the slant. Yeah. No, stay on. Keep me outside the numbers. Mm. So, how close is your team as it is right now to the New England Patriots? Um, man, our team is. I mean, we're working. You know, I, I trust everybody on our staff, everybody on the office, you know, offensive side, defensive side. You know, I put. You know, all my trust into them. So um, this year, you know, it, it was tough. You know, we, we fell short. Uh, we lost the game at home that we, we shouldn't have, you know, lost. But at the end of the day, you know, we got to keep pushing and stay positive. So do you see they've had their issues up in New England? Do you feel like Rome's starting to fall a little bit where they're vulnerable more so than they were? Um, For sure, for sure. Uh, no doubt. And then, like I said, it's uh, – for me, I'm new to this. So this is like a new, like – you know, New England is, you know, our, you know, kryptonite when we say we're bad, or we're Superman. So uh, in a situation like that, you know, like, it's tough, you know, to see like that catch and the, the whole excitement to going, oh, yeah, we won again to, wow, you lost it. And then, wow, you lost it. Yeah, the are trying to lose home. Yeah. But you, you still had home field. I mean, what, what happened in that the divisional round against Jacksonville? What happened? I think. Throughout the whole season, you look at our season, you know, we, we were five games where we were down by, like, 70 points, and we came back and won. Mm-hmm. Um, in a game like Jacksonville, you know, we were, we were, you know, we're down the whole game for about 20 points, and we come back, we win, we lose the game 25, uh, 45 to 42. 42. And in a situation like that, we play great when we're losing as an offense. Right. Now, if we step up in the game where, you know, we're ahead of, ahead of the game, come out second half and play strong, obviously it's a different outcome of the game. But, you know, we dug a hole too deep for us to get out of, so, are you better than Antonio Brown in your mind? Do, do you feel like you're better than he is? Um, <laughs> AB's probably listening right now. Oh, you know, he, <laughs> you know he listening. <laughs> you know it. You know, obviously, you know, everyone has that the mindset of, you know, trying to be the best player 
um, obviously, I have a great mentor, you know, Antonio Brown. He, I mean, the dude's tremendous, a great athlete that does everything around the board. He does. Um, I think what I bring different to the game is my physicalness and being able to willing to block for you guys like Le'Veon Bell to, you know, get those thousand yards. You know, AB does block too, but I do more of the dirty work, you, you know, and that's how I feel like, you know, my game is more, you know, expandable and more, you know, what I can do on the field for, you know, my team. And by the way, I looked the other day, we were talking about combine numbers, how overrated the 40 times can be as, as it applies to how you're going to do in pro football. Yes. You were what, four, five, six, yeah, four, five, two, four, five, two. Antonio Brown at the combine ran four, five, nine, which is virtually four, six, right. which doesn't sound like speed receiver speed, no. right? It doesn't yes. sound like run by you speed. Uh, I think he runs by lots of people, he, right? Antonio is more quick than fast. Well, yep. No, I mean, definitely. his start, stop, and that phone booth quickness is so hard to jam him. And because people are afraid to press him, because you know you miss, it's bye-bye. So they're more apt to play off. And then, like I said, he's quick, so he eats up the cushion so quick. They bail. Now he stops. But balls he has, in there. He has subtle acceleration. He does. When you're, you're, you're not ready for it, and he hits that last gear. And he, he can change speeds unbelievably. He is yep. by people, man. Yes. And it's so crazy because, you know, I see this every day. A lot of the oohs and ahs during the game is what he does in practice. Mm -hmm. and, and also, you know, it, it deals with, you know, playing with Ben for so many years. You have that chemistry with your quarterback that, you know, when they said, oh, the quarterback takes seven steps, you know, to throw the post, and then A.B. takes, you know, eight steps to run the post. And it's just the time is, like, perfect every time. So um, it, it's crazy that, you know, me being how young I am, right. I was a fan, and now actually playing with the guy. It's uh, ridiculous. That's that's the hardest thing. The hardest thing it is for a receiver to learn is that you need to be coming open when the quarterback is ready to throw the ball. Yep. You can't be early or you can't be late. If you're early, he's not ready to throw the ball. What good is that you're open if he's not ready to throw it? Mm -hmm. And if you're late, he's going to someone else. So that's a fine line between knowing, okay, seven, when his back foot hit, he's ready to release it, I'm coming open. Mm -hmm. That was the hardest thing as a young receiver for myself to learn is that Coming open too quick served me no purpose. Yep. It was almost like I was covered because he wasn't ready to throw me the ball. I'm not going to get the ball, so I might as well have been covered. And then, obviously, you're covered. He's going somewhere else with the ball. Yeah, he got. He has his reads. So you got to know that. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone wants to be open because right. you, you run your routes early. Yep. You're supposed to go 12, go 12, don't go 10. So give us your breakdown of a guy you know from University of Southern California named Sam Darnold, who's going into this draft as one of, he could be the first overall pick. Your thoughts about him and his future? Uh, super excited about this kid. You know, I played this uh, Sam Darnold for one year. Mm -hmm. uh, his instincts on, you know, releasing the ball out of routes is, mm -hmm. it's awesome. You know, uh, for him, I think this year he's, he's, he, I think he has, he's a pocket, he's a, a running quarterback, but can also be a pocket quarterback. Yep. He's, you know, versatile, he can do both. Uh, I'm excited where he ends up at. Hopefully not uh, the Cleveland Browns because, you know, that will be going against him, you know, twice a year. Going against him. What's going on with Le'Veon? Obviously, he's been, he's been franchised again. He played on the franchise tag last year, held out, came in right before the, uh, the season started. He threatened to retire, threatened to hold out again, yeah. maybe to the season. Do you think a long-term deal gets done? What's going on with Le'Veon in the studio? Man, I'm praying he, get, he gets his long-term deal. Uh, he proved himself this year. Mm -hmm. You know, he one of the best running backs in the league. Um, probably the best running back in the league right now. Uh, he, I don't know what he's going to do. If I know Le'Veon, he, he's for sure going to sit out of camp. <laughs> Preseason, he's for sure not showing up. And, you know, hopefully during the season he comes back. But, you know, I'm praying that, you know, we can get him back. Right. But I think another reason why he, we, we franchise tag him is because you're trying to get this guy right here. Uh, <laughs> uh, get this uh, guy right here. That's yeah. Well, that's going to be a lot of money tied up in LeBron. He's a lot of money. 35 a year. <laughs> Maybe I'm going 16 a year. Mm. AB making 16. Ben making 20. Mm. That's a uh, lot. They ain't going to have no cheese for you, cuz. Hey, hey, I'm going to give my contract for uh, <laughs> LeBron James. Wow. That's, that's, that's a high awesome. recruiting task you have. You know, Cleveland and Pittsburgh. You, know. so you got a yeah. history there, so you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to give him a really good pitch. I know. I know. I'm working on it. So if I gotta, but but you're, 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 you're good. With, you're good with the Browns. Joe will give up his number. Hey, LeBron gonna have to pay. That check. <laughs> <laughs> you have to pay that check. <laughs> Juju, thanks so much for joining us. Can Des Bryant still be an elite receiver? We'll discuss that next. And I won't back down.